Okay, we're going to start talking about um, trying to write situations when we are given data. Well, let's talk first about what are your thoughts, well, this is called what are your thoughts on the situation, but let's talk about make a list of words that will help you with writing or identifying parts of a word problem. When you're looking at a word problem, some of the things that you need to be looking for are words like down payment. If I were you, those of you in my class, I would write these on maybe the back of your paper. Down payment. Um, another thing that you're looking for is balance remaining. Maybe the number of. The word cost. Initial fee. Okay, a lot of times when you're talking about down payment, balance remaining, initial fee, those things are your constant. That's the thing you're starting with. Okay, those are very important words. Now, we'll start seeing some more of these. These are just some ideas of what you um, could be seeing that you're going to want to make sure and pay attention to. Now, on the front side of your paper, it says we're going to think of these in pieces. Okay, so the parts, what you need to know on your paper, you need to write down. We need to know the what. What are we trying to find when we're talking about a word problem? What is the rate? That rate of change is very important. That's that number that goes with your X. The other thing you need to figure out is the initial amount. That initial amount is very important because it's what you're beginning with. It's the thing that you're starting with before things happen. Now, I want to remind you that we have slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. First off, this m is called your coefficient. It is called your rate of change. I would have this written down on the back if, um, of the paper we're using today. Coefficient, rate of change. Without going into any definitions, we also should know that it's going to be called the slope. We'll talk more about what slope means later. I just want you to know that that would be one of the words. Now the B, the thing that is added or subtracted, that's called your constant. The other thing it's called is your y-intercept. Again, you're going to see that word and we're going to talk about it more. That's where it crosses the y-axis. This constant, the ordered pair for this constant is 0 and some number. So 0, 3. Um, that's why when we were going on some of these graphs and we were going to look and see where they cross the y-axis, that, and the, they were drawing a line, where they cross the y-axis, that's important because that's part of my equation right here. That point, that number goes right there where the b is. The coefficient, the rate of change, is how this line is moving and changing with what I'm writing in the blue, like how many down and how many over. Okay? My x, remember, that's my independent variable. And my y is my dependent that's when we go into a table and we're putting um, the X and the Y. So say, for example, that the X is the number of something. Y could be a total cost, a total amount rem remaining. It's a total of something. All right. Let's look at the front of your paper. And we're talking about, we've got a graph, and it's talking about balance remaining in number of months. When I look at this graph, there's a couple different things that I need to do in order to answer my questions. But first, let's look at the first question. It says, what are my two labels? 
what is on my x and y axis? Now, on your paper, I want you to go to your graph, and I want you to label the x and the y. I need to make sure that people are getting that straight. Now, my two labels, one of them, my x, is my number of months. My Y is my balance remaining. Now the next question they ask me is what is my starting amount? Is it owed or is it paid in addition to? Okay. So my starting amount right now, circle this point up there on your graph. That right there is my starting point. That's where my graph begins. That point is zero. And what number is that? Five. It should be up above 500. Each line goes, look at down here, each line. Every two line is 50, so it's 25, 50, 75, 100, so it's 525. Now, it asked us, is it owed or paid in addition to? So are we starting at 525 and, and paying, like getting more money? No. This is something that's going down. So as we're starting here, we are, we are, um, that's money that we're borrowing or, or getting from somebody. So right here we've got my starting amount is 525 and it is owed. I know it's owed because my rate of change is going down. I'm taking away from that amount. So it says how much is being paid each time. This right here, this is your coefficient. This is your rate of change. Um, let's see. There's a couple ways that you can figure that out. You can go up here and try and figure up, figure out on the graph how it's changing, like how you're going down and over each time. Like here, if I look on the graph, I look that I'm going down 25, 50, 75. I'm going down 75 and over 1. Down 75 and over 1. So I can find 75 over 1 on the graph from point to point. I would make sure I marked this down on my paper so that I made sure I knew what I was doing, going down 75 and over 1. This is one way to find your rate of change. Another way is what I was trying to show yesterday with what we were doing, is I've got 0 and 525. 1 and 450. Well, if you do delta Y over delta X, the change in Y, that is minus 70, whoops, minus 75. And delta X, the change is plus 1. So delta Y over delta X negative 75 over 1, which is negative 75. It's negative. Well, let me ask you this. Why is it negative? The balance is going down. That's why it's negative. So we should have this up here being negative on the 75. So my rate of change is negative 75. Now, the next question says, what did we buy? Err. It says, you know, I look up here at the graph and it tells me balance, balance remaining in number of months. It says we're starting at 525 and subtracting off 75. So if we were to make up a word problem, what could we buy for $525? A TV, an iPhone, shoes. Who's buying shoes for $525? Oh. Okay, well, i got to hang out with y'all. If you have $525 to be able to buy shoes. Okay, so it could be any of that. So say I'm just going to go with the idea that I'm going to buy a TV, okay? And, okay, so like in this, you're buying the TV, and then 
Um, if it's not on your paper, just don't worry about it right now. I'm going to go on to another part. Um, now when we go over here, on my next slide, we have to be able to, this is the same graph, so you may have to have it in another part, or just add it on, maybe even on the back. It's trying to say, well, now, how, now that we have this information, how do we write our word problem? Well, when I come down here, they already kind of have one set up for me. So right now, you're just paying attention to what I'm saying. So you just, like for me, I'd come up with a name. We've got Oliver. Bought a new TV. Now, we bought it for 400, no, not 400. How much was it? 525. Each month, she pays, what is, how much does she pay? $75 until it's paid off. How many months did it take Oliver? How how many months did it take to pay off? Oh, not to pay off Oliver. Woo. To pay off the TV. Now, it's asking you to write the write an equation for it. Okay, there's a couple ways we can write it. Remember, y equals mx plus b. Y equals, what is the rate of change? What did we find that to be? How much did we change by? But it, and it was a negative 75. X. Now, was it minus 525? No, minus 75. Well, we're, yeah, so we have negative 75X plus... 525. You can write it this way, or you can write it the other way, which is y equals, we start with 525 minus 75x. Now, if I was to answer this question, I already kind of heard it. How long does it take to pay this off? Where are you looking to see when it pays it off? On the x-axis, on the x-axis right here, we have 7, 0. Now, remember, the 7 is the x, the 0 is the y. Well, the x is the number of months. So this is 7 months, and it says remaining balance. So the remaining balance is 0. That's why it's 7 months to take it to pay it off. Let's look at another one. Now, it says, using some words discussed in the previous slides and the piece method, write a situation to fit the table below. Now, before we can write our situation, we need to be able to know the rate of change and the initial amount, okay, or the constant. Now, a lot of times, I don't like looking at my tables when they are written horizontally. So I'll go and change it to vertical. Again, it depends on how much room you have on your paper. I'm going to put X then Y. Or I could actually, I may just put sandwiches and total cost. Now, watch what I'm going to do. Because it doesn't start at zero, I'm going to go down a little bit and I'm going to put two and six. 3 and 750. There's a reason why I left myself some space. 5 and 1050. 8 and 15. 12 and 21. Now, first off, it doesn't tell me my starting amount. Because your starting amount, the X number has to be zero, and then the Y number. So then the Y number is your starting amount. So we would have to figure that out. But before we can figure that out, we have to figure out our rate of change. So I need to do delta Y divided by delta X. So right here, my change in Y, how do I get from 6 to 750? Add a dollar fifty. Then the next one goes from 750 to 1050. So that is not 350, that's 3. 
Then 1050 to 15 is 450. 15 to 21 is 6. These are all different, but that doesn't matter. We have to do our delta x first or second. Plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4. Well, when I do delta y over delta x, I have, in the first one, I have $1.50 divided by 1. $1.50 divided by 1 is $1.50. The next one says 3 divided by 2, $1.50. $4.50 divided by 3, that's $1.50. And then again, $6 divided by 4 is $1.50. All of these are the same, so that means that it is linear, right? So my rate of change, my rate of change is $1.50. Now, am I, is it positive or negative? It's positive because I'm going up. As I'm going up, I'm adding. So now to go backwards, I want to find zero. So I'm going to fill in my table right here. Now as I go backwards, okay, let's see. I've got zero in some number, one in some number. I need to have some number plus $1.50 to equal six. So to go backwards, I can go six. Minus 150, and that gives me, not 550, should be 450. Then I need to go backwards again, and 450 minus 150 to go backwards, I get $3. So my, my constant, my constant is 3. Now, I found my constant, I found my rate of change, and I should be able to write my equation. Oh, go back. My equation, y equals mx plus b. Remember, m is my rate of change. b is my constant. So I have y equals... What was my rate of change? 150. Well, if I would put 150 plus 3, what am I missing? My x. Where does the x go? The x always goes with the coefficient or the rate of change. So now here is my equation. But the thing was, so now I have my equation, and now we have to go and look back and write a word problem for this. So as we go through and think about it, I've got number of sandwiches in total cost. Okay, so let me get another slide. I've got number of sandwiches and total cost. And I have my equation. What does the 150 mean? When I come back over here, hold on real quick. When I come back over here, it's my rate of change. Cassandra, what are you trying to tell me? It's the what? It's the cost of one sandwich because for each sandwich, it's going up by $1.50. Okay, so the question says, why is three at zero? So as we're going and looking, I know that I'm paying $1.50 for each sandwich. So what could be happening with the three? An initial rate for what? So wait, this is the cost of each sandwich. Okay, wait, now. It could be a tip, right? Because if they delivered it, or you, or say you went into a place and you bought 10 sandwiches and they made 10 sandwiches 
and they were each a dollar fifty, and then you tip them three dollars. It could be that. What about what do you have to pay when Pizza Hut delivers? A delivery charge. It could be a tip. It could be a delivery charge. It could. It's only something you pay one time. Okay. So if I went to write an equate or write a situation for this one, I could say JoJo is buying sandwiches. I don't know how it switched colors, but that's okay. Switches switch cut uh, us is buying sandwiches for Miss Crawford's class. And he pays a dollar fifty for oops. That's like four, like a golf four. Here we go. For each sandwich. He also gives a three dollar tip. How much would it cost? For, and you could use any amount, 15 sandwiches. Now, this right here is something that you're going to have to be able to do. You have to come have the data and be able to write a situation, write an example. But before you can write it, you have to know your constant and you have to know your rate of change. Let me give you a minute to write that. So on this next one, it says write the situation to fit the graph below. So I want you to find the equation and write the situation, write a situation. First, I want to go through and find the pieces in order to write the equation. I know I need two things. I know I need the rate of change. And I know I need the constant. The constant is probably the easiest to go through and find on here because it's where it crosses the y-axis. It's at zero and something. So it's right here up at the top, which is my constant is zero and 50. Now my rate of change, my line is going down. So that means I'm decreasing. So I'm going to be subtracting off. What am I changing by each time? I'm going down five and over one. If I built a table, I could find that same thing. My rate of change is five, oh, not positive five. It's got to be a negative five over one, which is negative five. Now I can find it, again, I can find it from the graph, or I can build a table with my points, 0, 50, and 1 and 45. Where delta y, the change in y, is minus five. Delta x is plus 1. So that's where the negative 5 over 1 comes from. So now my equation. I have y equals, I'm starting with 50. I'm subtracting off $5 each time. So it's 50 minus 5x. You could have written it y equals negative 5x plus 50. Those both mean the same thing. Which, with this the rate of change? The, this right here? That right there? Yes, that is the rate of change. Negative 5 over 1, these are the rate of change. Now it asked us to write a situation. Now realize we're talking about number of weeks and your balance. So an example of what I could do, I know, let's see, I'm y equals 50 minus 5x. x is the number of weeks, 
and 50 is the amount I start with, the initial amount. Okay, so I could write one saying that Kyla um, borrowed $50 from her mom. And she is paying her back. Five dollars per week. How many weeks does it take to pay her back? It take for Kyla to pay her back to pay her mom back. Now, for this question, what if this was a question on the test and they wanted to know how long it took to pay her back? Where would you look on the graph? I'll move this back here. Let me go over here. You're going to look for the x-intercept. The x-intercept right here is 10, 0. This is saying that in 10 weeks, this is 0 amount remaining remaining so it would take 10 weeks